So I'm gonna uh, start Roger slide. Uh, so basically, that's a quick introduction about uh, Inya Cycles. Basically, we are a group that kind of we want to promote um, hacker culture in NUS and in the public in general. And so these are our, in case you're new to us, uh, these are four main, uh, four main events we usually hold. Uh, hacker School is sort of similar to kind of Hacker Tools, but we teach some other different stuff. Uh, Friday Hacks is kind of a uh, talk we hold every Friday, and that's kind of where the pizza is provided and stuff like that. We invite some industry people, come down, uh, give a talk about something they think is very interesting and they would like to, they would like to share with students and like general everyone. Uh, hack and Roll is kind of basically uh, our flagship kind of hackathon. We kind of don't really have a problem statement, kind of invite everyone to just come in, form a group, and then do something you think is awesome or like things cool. And then that's our uh, hacker tools, which is what we're holding right now. Which is basically we kind of teach um, tools that we think is very useful for computing students or students in general, but it's not really taught in your curriculum generally. Right. So yeah, so basically uh, these are the required things for today's hacker, hacker tools. We'll be trying to install uh, Ubuntu DM. So we need all of y'all to basically uh, have a virtual box installation, uh, virtual box ready, and then have the Ubuntu 32 for ISO file. So uh, everyone has it ready? Everyone zoom. Yeah, anybody need like a short time to install? I haven't installed it yet or all prepared already. Yeah, nice. Okay, oh, wait, wait, this is a bit on. Um, yeah, so yeah, for those who are like, confused about like hacker, why we like hacking anything, but basically uh, this is not like when we talk about hackers, we're not really talking about the conventional, I mean, the conventional meaning of what hacker is, right? A hacker, uh, like the traditional meaning, is kind of just someone who just tries to solve the problem in uh, a genius or like a, a, an elegant solution to like a, a small problem, basically, right? So that's kind of what we try to promote. Yeah, and these are some of the very famous people, uh, Richard Stallman, creator. I think he was involved in. GCC, then Linus Torvalds, Twitter, and then Kernel, you know, and a bunch of other people. So, yeah, so Hacker Tools is kind of inspired by the meeting semester by MIT. So, it's also the same series, which also has the same vision of kind of like trying to get people to learn about tools that aren't really taught in the curriculum, but are actually very useful for, like, in this case, the CS gen uh, curriculum. Yeah. So, yeah, so brief introduction to what Linux and Unix is for those that are kind of new. Most cannot be eaten. Yeah. Uh, yeah uh, Unix, Linux is kind of just like a Unix like operating system kernel. In general, if you use a Mac, that's kind of also a Unix like operating system kernel. And it's uh, very popular across, like, if you ever like use a server before, all the servers, most of, if most, if not all the servers in the world are kind of running Linux nowadays. Then Chromebooks, Android are also off like kind of uh, forks of Linux basically. Yeah. So yeah, so this is a bit just a bit of history of the operating system. Uh, yeah, and you can as you can see, I think this is stats. I'm not sure if this is updated, uh, but these are some stats to show like the operating system market share across like non-consumer desktop, I believe. So a lot of uh, development tools are kind of designed around Unix or like generally the command line and stuff like that. So if you are getting started in development or like you want to do something, it's actually uh, easier to kind of use like a Unix environment if you don't have one, especially if you're like using Windows. If you're using Mac, you can kind of work around instead of installing Ubuntu, you can use like just you know, built-in terminal and stuff like that. But I think a lot of things you can build, you can only do in like it's much easier to build in like a Unix environment than if you don't have one, yeah. So, so why are we using virtual machines stuff like no booting or anything? I think uh, for those who are kind of new to these kind of things, uh, basically virtual machines are kind of a simulated computer within your own computer, right? So it's also a very uh, safe environment in the sense that if you break anything in your virtual machine, you can't really break your whole computer. Whereas if you're like doing something like dual booting or installing it on bare metal, you kind of have like they have the risk of kind of breaking something and like breaking your entire machine up. 
yeah, so for the purposes of uh, this hacker tool, you install it uh, in a VM setting, but kind of a lot of things like the installation and stuff like that, you cannot run it. If you want to try run it, you can run it on bare metal. It should be roughly the same process. It shouldn't be too different. Yeah. Yeah, so other useful features from like PM, you can run it in isolation, this kind of basically if anything breaks or you get hacked or like if you are doing like pen testing and stuff like that, if anything happens to go wrong, everything's kind of isolated within a VM. So generally you're quite safe. And then you can also have snapshots to kind of capture the machine state so it won't really you can, you can basically come back uh, to the, the previous state with, uh, if you need that. Uh, yeah. Mm, yes, so some disadvantages that we need to kind of show is that VMs are generally very they are much lower than uh, running on bare metal because it is an emulation like bare metal and also it's kind of sharing resources for like stuff like RAM and storage and stuff like that. So it's sharing with your uh, actual PC. So you kind of need to like compete for resource. And also it's very hard to use VMs for uh, very high intensive like workloads like games like HPC basically. Yeah. So these are just some examples of uh, VM software, like software that kind of allow you to run virtual machines. Uh, for the purposes of today, we'll be using VirtualBox, but you can use a bunch of these. I think for Mac, there's UTM. I've never tried it before, so I don't know how it runs. Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, so we'll be using VirtualBox because uh, it's kind of open source software. Um, it has a very friendly GUI, and generally it's quite it's cross platform unless you're using an M1 Mac. Uh. But if you're using an M1 Mac, you can't really virtualize much currently. So, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, I'm just gonna. Wait, can everyone see my screen? Yes. So, everyone uh, in Zoom or like over here, you can just maybe just take a moment to set up your virtual box. I start up virtual box if you have it. Just share my main screen. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, if Zoom, anyone in Zoom wants to like ask a question, just feel free to like type it in chat. Yeah. Okay. I'm just gonna. Okay, my virtual office. Just... Okay, so let's see if you want to start a new one, hopefully. Uh... Okay, and so basically, you want to find the. Just a moment. Yeah, so for the version, you want to kind of go for 264 bit. I don't think anyone here should run anything different. Yeah. Oh, yes, but I already have another one. Yeah, so memory size, I think for now, just keep it small, especially if you have like a machine with not a lot of RAM. Just keep it to about uh, 1024 megabyte, unless you like have a specific use case in mind that you need more RAM. Otherwise, uh, this is mostly sufficient for just running simple okay. stuff. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's true. Okay, uh, I'll just do it for 296. Yeah. Uh, hard disk, we will create a virtual hard disk and we want to set it to the default VDI just for speed. And then for this, I uh, like to just use dynamically size so I can just change it whenever I want. But it's up to you whether you kind of want to have a fixed size and not let it expand beyond that. Yeah. Hmm. So, yeah. Uh, VDI, yes. Yeah, so. Uh, sure. Uh, do you have your okay? Yeah, I think it should be fine. Yeah. Uh, 
sorry, yeah, okay, sorry. The file location. Oh, oh, um, uh, this is recommended. Uh, virtual box. This image. Yeah. So for like space, uh, it really depends on like how much RAM you can kind of allocate on your PC or like your laptop here. Yeah, I think uh, one one zero two four is enough. Uh, just for purposes, I'm just gonna allocate as much as I can. Then this is just up to you also. Uh, I'll just allocate the default ten gigabytes for purposes of this demonstration. Uh. Yeah. Everyone okay with this? Is up to this. The default. Um, because mine is defaulted at eight gigabytes. Does this matter to it on? Uh, I think I was adjusting this. That's why it's mine is defaulting at ten. But yeah, I don't think it matters uh, unless you like run out of space. Yeah. Yeah, so this is just like where you go store your files. Huh? So if you're, this is just like how much space you need to store all your files you're working on. Yeah. So yeah, uh, Zoom chat, anyone? Uh, what was the first step? Okay, let me rerun this. Okay. Yes, okay. So uh, click on new on the top, top, top bar here. And then usually uh, just type the name of kind of at least you have your kind of like default you see the version kind of default to Ubuntu. I already have a Ubuntu here, just like Ubuntu 2. Yeah, a machine folder order is kind of just more of preference. Then you go into memory size, and this is just how much RAM you want to allocate your virtual machine. Uh, I think usually one zero two four is enough, but just to make things faster for the demonstration, I'll change it up to four zero nine six. Yeah. Those those any questions so far? Yeah, okay. Any questions so far? Okay, yeah. So for hard disk, you just kind of create a virtual hard disk and then you select VDI. Right. And then for storage, I kind of just use stick to the memory allocator. You can switch it to fix if you don't want, like, you don't have a lot of memory. Hard drive space, and you want like a fixed limit, up. and then I allocate okay. uh ten gigs. Right, everyone caught up to this step. Uh, anyone in Zoom need any more questions or like need me to repeat? Mm, okay, I'm gonna move ahead now. Yeah, so now you should have like uh, one extra um, VM here on the tab. And so uh, when we start, we also need to um, get ready the this image. So you remember you have your ISO file, so we go uh, put it here now. Let me just bring this down. Yeah, so you want to go into the settings. And then you want, you can kind of configure all this in your own time, but the one you are concerned about is this storage here, right? And basically, you see this one, uh, basically, the disk says empty. You want to kind of click this button over here. And then, uh, basically, uh, assuming we don't have all this, you want to uh, add a new medium. And you go into your folder where you kind of have your Ubuntu ISO installed. And then just click on it. Right. Yeah, so I'm going to start from uh, the very beginning. So you go to settings. You go to storage and then you want to kind of click on this add optical drive button, the small one. And then by right, uh, there should be nothing here, right? Then you should uh, add a medium. And then uh, you go where, so that, just go to where you install your .iso file and just click on it. Can I put ISO file somewhere, somewhere to click on uh, No, it doesn't matter, yeah, that doesn't matter, yeah, because you're loading it up, yeah. Uh, everyone caught up with this step uh, in Zoom? Okay. Alright, cool. Alright, so once you kind of got here, you just click uh, choose. And then if you see, it should have like, you should have this Ubuntu this year. Right, okay, cool. So now we'll kind of just start the installation medium. So if you see your storage here, you just want to make sure your primary device here is this Ubuntu.iso, right? And, and it should launch into the installation medium.
curious view. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. I think Oh, I got distracted. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, anyone in Zoom kind of needs help getting to this uh, loading screen? Oh, uh -huh. Your one field. Uh, what was the error for you? So I can just kind of. <laughs> Not the latest version or went to short. Say again. Has everyone gotten this step yet? Yeah. All right, cool. Uh, everyone has this install page uh, set up. Anyone need other other than guys at Zoom? Anyone else need like help yeah. getting this stuff? The resolution looks like really cute. It's very small, right? Yeah. yeah no worries. I think that's a virtual machine kind of specific. So once you've installed a video, you cannot set the resolution afterwards. Okay. Yeah. Okay, sure. So this, I think it's just detecting virtual box in the virtual box default resolution, like 600 by 800, if I can recall properly. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'll just move on first. Yeah. So basically, you just want to click on install. And I mean, select your... Okay, so generally, if you look at your keyboard, your keyboard is kind of using the US key uh, layout. You, if you're not using the US layout, you kind of know. But like by default, I think a lot of the, basically almost all the laptops or like PCs kind of sold uh, in Singapore is kind of using the US layout. So you just select here. Yeah, yeah so uh, generally, you can do either either installation, but for today we we'll just use minimal. Yeah. 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 And so we can just continue on here. Yeah, so you should get to this kind of message, but uh, there's no need to scan. So when you, er when you talk about erasing this, you kind of erase the disk allocated to your virtual machine. So there's no uh, harm to your computer. So over here, you can just kind of uh, click on uh, erase this and install it and start the installation process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
I believe the minimum that Ubuntu kind of allows is six gigabytes, so eight should be fine. Uh, uh, what's the issue? Yeah. Uh, what's the issue? It, they update the other software page. Uh, you need at least eight gigabytes, uh, eight point six gigabytes, and it says that the computer only has eight point six gigabytes. And how many units? They said eight point six. Okay, maybe it's a. I think maybe the new version might require more. That's my guess. Yes. So we can just kind of run through it again. Uh, with 10 gigs. I do not know that. Yeah. Yes, just remain a new. Yeah. Anyone else have like trouble getting to this kind of final explanation? All right, cool. All right. So basically, just a clean install now and the process will take. Quite a while, especially in PM. Yeah, and so it's been morning, but shouldn't have any worries. Yeah. Then this is your more of your time zone. So just like, oh, yes, it's this. So uh, for this, you want to just kind of, I mean, this is just kind of personal preference. This, right? And then, password, I believe we want to kind of set this as your super user password as well. So, yeah. Yeah, so once you get to this screen, it should take about 10, 15 minutes for depending on your hardware to kind of install everything. Yeah, so just give it a moment. Yeah, yeah the installation will take quite a while. So anyone like have trouble getting into this installation? Yeah. Anyone? I don't think he doesn't like take a break. Yeah, I'm zoom also. Stop the recording for now.
Oh yes, yeah, sorry. Thank you for that. Uh, I was uh unmuted. I mean, I was muted. Yes, yeah, sorry. So um, for those that did not hear me on Zoom, uh, basically, uh, you want to once you've got done the installation, you want to restart it. You want to make sure, uh, basically, your primary device is sort of uh not the ISO file. And if it is, just kind of remove the ISO file from settings. And then you just kind of uh restart the VM by clicking start. Right. Yes. Thank you for reminding me that I was muted. I did not catch that. Yeah, so even here is low on space. Interesting. Yeah, so once you kind of finish, you should get this flashing command prompt again. Yeah. Everyone so okay with it. Yeah, so basically if you want to install any packages, uh usually you can try to install it using app install. If you don't know what's the meaning name, you can at least use a search function. So just yeah, so So you can now see what uh things are available for installation. So like when I saw SSG server stuff like that, just look at uh, which one you want to install and just kind of basically this is the full name. So you want to install like uh let's say SSH2. Just kind of do, do that. So SSH2. And this one is for whatever package kind of is available. Yeah. Um, see. Some other things you can try with is everyone like caught up here? Everyone A okay? Um, I don't have the ability to scroll up in the terminal. Inability to scroll up. Yeah, I'm not sure how it's the scroll reverse from the usual. Yeah, yeah. So for some reason, um, I don't know, maybe it's a track that thing. Like when you scroll up, then you scroll down. Okay, yeah, that's what. Okay. Uh, you can just get the gnome settings. So this thing here. So you can open. It's just like press your Windows key or like your super key. You go. You leave with this search bar. And so you have anything. You just search settings. Open it. Uh, I think there's one for. You can just like drag this down. If it's not working. Okay. I think there's a settings for mouse and touchpad. Yeah. Here. You see if that works, yeah. From I can test it out also. See if it works. Yeah. Uh. Anyone? Sorry. Yeah. Anyone in Zoom having trouble to get here? Yeah. Well, I need me to repeat because I was kind of muted. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so um, I'll just run through like some other stuff you can kind of do with the not just Ubuntu but mostly the virtual machine type stuff also. So let's say when you press X, right, you have this option, you know, this to save the machine state. And basically, it just save the current state of the machine. So if you're like, running something, you'll sort of like save the current state, and so you can exit out. Give it a few seconds. Yeah, so notice at the background, my terminal is still open. 
if I have any like past work, it cannot be trying to return it to the previous state as best as possible. Yeah. And so if you want like uh let's say you want to like kind of go back in time and like you want to like get a how do I say this? Basically have a snapshot of like what you currently have in case you break something. You can also um, get a snapshot which I will show shortly once this kind of restores. Yeah, so you know, notice I'm back in the shell. So if you want to like kind of get a snapshot of this exact time, the exact state of the machine, you can go up to the top left, you see machine, and you can click uh take snapshot, I believe. Yeah. We have to select snapshot. Yeah, so now the snapshot is received. So let's say I shut down this completely. Okay, so let's say I close everything. Okay. Right, and I want to kind of power the machine. And then I want to even use the option here. You want to restore the state, but uh, you can restore it when you boot up also somewhere here. Top left, so I believe if you move back, you can see this here. Oh, sorry. Uh, ah, yeah, so I believe if one restore is, I think that's somewhere else, but for now, you can just kind of restore it here. Let's say I want to restore back to my previous state. Just kind of like click X, click power machine, and restore. Yeah, so you notice just now before I shut down, I kind of closed all my terminal and closed all the applications running. And now when I restore the states, kind of back, the shower is back. So yeah, but this will take a while. Yeah. Yeah, so if you look behind this online account connection uh, application that I closed before, it's back up again because it was starting a snapshot. Yeah, so those are kind of the perks of running everything in a virtual machine compared to like running in bare metal. You know, if you're ever like running like very unstable software that might destroy your computer, you can kind of like preempt it by saving a snapshot. If it does like kind of die, you can just power off and restore the snapshot. So that's kind of the usefulness of a virtual machine. Right. So actually you can actually try that now. We just do a snapshot first. And then um yeah, give you a few seconds. Mm. Yeah, so uh, some, okay, if you're planning to use your virtual machine uh, for long term, I don't recommend you do this, but it's kind of like precursor to our next hacker tools, which is, I believe, common line. So if you want to like try, you can just kind of do arm, arm. no preserve root. And what this does, I mean, uh, don't run this by the way, uh, if you're planning to like keep your virtual machine, but it's just a remove recursive, the dash r is for recursive, dash f for false, no preserve root, it's just don't preserve the root folder. And dash is basically a root folder. So basically, if you would change directory to root, and root is just represented by this slash, and you do list directory with this ls, you can kind of see like a lot of uh, important uh, folders that kind of run your, this entire operating system is here, right? So basically, but they're trying to go back one command and press up. So basically, uh, if you have a command like that,
this basically deletes your entire uh, operating system. Yeah. So uh, running on your own risk, especially if you're running on bare metal, your, it might break your system. But in the virtual machine, I think it should be fine. So I'm going to try to run it. So, yes. Oh, they actually prevent it. Okay. Yeah, so basically it's just trying to delete every single file in the virtual machine. And basically, uh, by right, this shouldn't be able to boot back up. Okay. Uh, you don't want to do this here. But it's just kind of, uh, yeah, you can do this in virtual machine. But if you do this in like bare metal, you kind of scrub your entire machine. Yeah, but uh, I think it's taking a while. So I just go like instantly restore it to snapshot. And I'll show you another kind of cooler command but also that they're also break your machine but it's a bit more obscure i'm not sure if you guys heard of a uh, fog bomb before fog bomb okay yes then you'll be excited to hear about this okay. so we restart the machine back to our previous snapshot Okay, so basically, you type in uh, this specific uh, number of character type. So this is oh, let me just check if this is correct. Yeah, so this should, this string of comment to basically kind of crash your computer. And I'm just gonna quickly explain. Uh, let me just, okay, so basically, this is kind of like you're declaring a function. I didn't take enough error, by the way. Let me just, no, this doesn't work. Yeah, so basically, um, you're declaring a function here. Like you can see like, you're declaring a function called colon. So we're detecting no variables and inside it, it calls a colon. It pipes the output of colon into colon and, and just calls it to run in background. Yeah, so it's a recursive function that calls itself twice. And then the other two functions calls itself twice. And basically it keeps forking new processes until we run out of memory. Oh, it's yeah, hence a fork ball. Yeah. Oh. So I believe if I run this, I'm not sure if they're actually safe nowadays, but this was very famous for kind of Breaking your machine. Let me just see. Oh. Oh. Nope. Did they patch this? No. You can't fall bomb anymore, is it? I don't know. Are you fall bomb? Oh, this. Okay. Yes. Is it? Oh. It's not run anymore. Oh, that's not fun. <laughs> Yeah, so you used to be able to run this in any like unique shell and you just crash the entire system. Even you just SH? I mean, just type SH. You need to quote it. Oh, yes. You need to quote the, the. You need to quote this expression. I don't think so. At least I don't recall. Run it background. Yeah. Oh, I prevent it. That function new. Uh, I do not know they patched it, but <laughs> yeah. So uh, shell is kind of hard to use, but yeah. So yeah. but yeah, you can kind of like look up these commands. I think they are quite well known, like to like just not run in your system because you kind of break everything. So yeah. So we should run them, but not in, not in our actual Yeah. So run it, run, run your virtual machine like all you want, or like if you have any like, uh, like very unstable programs you want to test, or like you are doing like cyber security, you want to like break stuff. Yeah. Go ahead and run your virtual machine. So that's kind of what it is for, right? It's like a very controlled environment. You can't really break your own machine by doing anything here. Yeah. So yeah, sadly this doesn't work anymore. Should have tested it.
but yeah. I think aside from this, I think we are basically done for everything. So I just gonna go through some uh, alternatives to if you don't want to use the virtual machine or you find it a bit slow or like you can't take the basically downsides of it. It just resources your space. There are some other, especially if you're using Windows, there are some other uh, alternatives you can kind of use. Let me just, yeah. So recently, I think they've been working on Windows Surface and Linux. For if you're using Windows, I think WSL2 is capable of running uh, like Unix programs, like even the, the ones with graphical user interfaces. You can run it in Windows now, I believe. I haven't tried it yet, but yeah. We'll be having a separate uh, Hacker 2 session for WSL sometime after recess week. Most likely, I think week 8 or week 9, if I recall. Yeah, uh, if you are using like Mac OS, you kind of already have a Unix like um, environment. You just open your terminal. Basically, a lot of the um, com like command line uh, utilities and command line like commands you can kind of already run in Mac. So I think they're quite similar. And yeah, if you're using you're already using Linux, you kind of already have an environment. So like yeah, the so yeah. Uh, that's about it for today's workshop. Uh, if you guys have any feedback for us on like how we can improve this workshop, do scan the feedback form and let us know. I'll post it in the chat as well. Give me a second. Do you want us to give feedback? No, uh, it's completely up to you. Right? There's no obligation. So. <laughs> yes, it will be great. Uh, we don't. I mean, we. I think we would like to just improve on the workshop itself. Yeah.